Hey guys, in this video, I'm gonna take you step-by-step step through how I built this media console with storage. Keep watching and I'll show you how I did it. So this project utilizes plywood and a bit of walnut for the top, but the primary material is hard maple. I begin by breaking down the lumber into rough blanks at the miter saw. I picked up about 30 board feet from my local hardwood dealer, which should more than cover my needs. From this material, I'll be able to get my parts for the doors, two side panels, and the face frame. And I'll have a little bit left over for the trim molding later on in the project. Once I have all my blanks cut, I head off to do some milling. The lumber I bought was S2S, which means it's surfaced on two sides already. Surfaced it may be, but flat it ain't. So I need to mill these pieces flat on one face at the joiner. Then I run that flat face along the fence to square up one edge. Next, I take three steps to the left and run all my parts through the planer to get the opposite face flat and parallel to the face that I just jointed. Once I flatten that face, I continue to run the parts through the planer until I reach my target thickness of three quarters of an inch. Now each of my parts has two flat faces and one squared edge. By the way, now that all the parts are milled, this is a great time to label everything so I know exactly what needs to be cut out of each piece. The next step is to trim all my rough blanks to final length. I'm using my miter gauge to cross cut these parts at the table saw. Doing this helps ensure that if I need to cut two identical parts from the same blank, I'm guaranteed that those two parts will be the same length. Finally, it's time to cut all my parts out of the blanks. I use that square edge I made way back at the joiner to reference against the fence. First, I batch out all the rails and styles for each of the four doors and two side panels. Then the parts for the face frame and the raised panels. This went fairly quick as I didn't have to adjust the fence width many times. But man, these parts started piling up quick. And after untangling this mess of parts, it's time to focus on the joinery. I install my dado stack in the table saw to cut nice quarter inch flat bottom grooves. I'm cutting offset grooves here so I measure my distance to the fence and get to cutting. For these doors and side panels, I'm using traditional tongue and groove construction. I like this method for two reasons. First, it doesn't require any fasteners. No dominoes, no pocket screws, no nothing. Just one piece of wood glued to another piece of wood the way nature intended. And second, the entire method of joinery can be done just using a table saw. No fasteners required and one tool needed to get the job done? Sign me up. Okay, once I have all the grooves cut, I need to cut the tongues and I'm using my tenon jig for this job. By the way, if you wanna make this fence and jig set up for your own saw, I have a video explaining exactly how I did it and a set of plans to go with it. I'll leave a links for both of those in the description below. Finally, I need to glue up my door panels, which are gonna be made from two boards each because I couldn't find material wide enough to make them with a single board. But it's simple enough, and I gang two panels together in the same set of clamps to make things more efficient. Once the panels are out of the clamps, I just need to trim them to final length using my crosscut sled. Oh, and I have a video and plans for the sled too. Again, links in the description. Next comes the brutally boring part, sanding. I need to get these panels sanded to 120 grit, removing the glue lines and any runaway glue that might cause a high spot for the next step. Huh. What's up on Instagram? Epoxy River table, epoxy river teepee dispenser, bourbon moth trying to fit in something. Next, I rip each panel to final width and these guys are all ready to get raised. I'm using a panel raising bit on my router, or as I like to call it, the spinning circle of death. Remember when using a bit this large to set your router to its lowest speed. I begin this process by taking a shallow pass first to remove a good bit of the waste material. Remember, three and a half inch bit spinning at 10,000 RPMs. Take it slow. Next, I move the fence back, exposing the rest of the bit, and cut the panel again. You're still taking a pretty big cut here. This video is sped up, but I'm really moving at about an inch per second across the bit. So this first set of passes is probably gonna leave some burn marks. So what I like to do is raise the bit just a hair and take one last cleanup pass. And here you can see how this produces a nice clean result. And I'm gonna go ahead and sand these edges now before I glue up because it's easier to do at this stage. Now it's time to glue up the doors and side panels. So this really is pretty easy. Just put some glue on the tongues and slide them into the grooves. Is there a mature way of describing that? Hmm. Now just add the panel. 
It should fit easily with not much force needed. Finally, add the other style to complete the frame and panel door and clamp it up. Slight adjustments may need to be made, so use a rubber mallet or a dead blow for this to reduce the chance of denting up the material. Here's another look at the process, this time for the side panels. It's basically the same process, but you have little legs sticking out on one side. Really, in my experience, if you cut your part square, you should end up with a square panel pretty easily. Just a couple taps here and there, but that's just about it. Once those are out of the clamps, I sand the frame and also the middle of the panel. And that's it. Four perfect little doors and two side panels are all ready to become a cabinet. Okay, I now need to cut my case parts out of this three quarter inch plywood. All the plywood parts come out of the single sheet, which is pretty nice. The track saw makes quick work of this. I then cut my dividers and shelves to width and that's it. Six plywood parts in total. The center divider gets glued together so I spread an even layer of glue with a roller and go and find all the small clamps I own to get a good seamless glue up. Okay, one detail that I think is easy to address now are the shelf pin holes. I use some double sided tape and a strip of plywood to make sure I place the shelf pins in line with one another on both sides and then the shelf pin jig is pretty handy at helping me get evenly spaced holes. You can do this step once the case is built, but I find it easier and quicker to do it before everything is assembled. Next, I begin working on the joinery for the cabinet. Now I'm using dominoes here to fasten the case together. However, dowels or pocket screws can be substituted here without changing anything. This will be reflected in the plans for this build as well, so no matter what joinery you use, the plans will still work for you. Getting the domino mortises in the middle of the case is a little tricky, but my go-to method is to use double-sided tape to lay down a strip to reference off of. Now I'm only using like 16 dominoes here, so the joinery is cut in no time and it's time to begin assembly. Each mortise gets some glue and a domino is tapped into place. I then add a little more glue to the domino and tap the side panel on. Whenever I do cabinet construction with dominoes, I make the mortises a little long to allow for lateral adjustments to be made. I then repeat the same procedure for the other side where you can get a little bit better look at what I did. I then pull out my longest pipe clamps, which are just barely long enough for this job and make sure everything is square. Now it was about right here in the project that I realized that these were the only two clamps that I had that were long enough to do this glue up. So I had to wait about an hour to let this dry before I continued. I then added the center dividers, which slipped on nice and easy. Now comes the fun bit. In order to get the bottom of the cabinet on, I had to line up the dominoes in two different directions. Now my method for doing this is to get one side secured first and then work on getting the dominoes on the other side partially inserted by bending the plywood slightly. This allows me to go back and pop the center divider in place and then finish off the side and basic case construction is complete. I just move my two clamps from the top of the cabinet to the bottom while leaving the clamping squares in place to make sure everything stays square. I also pre-drilled and installed screws to act as clamps for the center divider. Now once the glue is dried, you could remove these screws, but they're never going to be seen where they are, so I'm just going to leave them there. A quick double check for square, and onward I go. Okay, one final detail on the case is adding a center support to the bottom. This console is six feet long, and so this is going to prevent any kind of sagging in the middle over time. Now while this glue up finishes drying, I'm going to focus on the face frame. I start by cutting the hinge mortises in the sides of the frame. I'm going to go ahead and use dominoes again for the face frame construction, so I plunge my mortises at my pencil marks and proceed to assembly. The face frame goes together in a matter of minutes, and three clamps hold it all together. Now I'm installing the face frame with glue, and for this job I like to use a thick, quick setting wood glue. I just slap the face frame on and get to clamping. And clamping, and clamping, and clamping. Since I'm painting the console white, I thought it would be a great idea to contrast this with a walnut top. So choice. To do that, I first need to lay out how I want to glue the boards together. Now while I pay attention to grain direction, I focus on aesthetics more than anything. The top is going to be fastened to the console with screws, so warping really isn't an issue here, and I'd rather have the most beautiful looking top I can get from this wood. At the table saw, I rip clean lines as well as cut out any unwanted defects like big knots, cracks, or wane. I then order my boards in sequence so I know how they go together. Next, I grab each set of boards and run them across the joiner together. This ensures a nice tight joint line when gluing up. First, I grab one and two. Then I grab two and three, 
three and four, and so on, until I've joined in each pair, being careful to place them back in the same orientation on the workbench. Now with a little glue and a little mindfulness, I glue them up. I'm not using dominoes or biscuits for this alignment. The top isn't that big, so I'm just going to be super careful that each joint is seamless and aligned to one another as I clamp. I glued the top up in two halves so I could run each half through the planer before finally gluing the two halves together. Again, being super careful of getting an aligned glue joint because now I can't go back to the planer. The only way to fix this would be to sand it or use a hand plane. I also like to wash the glue line with water this time so I can get a good look at the glue joint and also to make sure they don't have a ton of sanding or scraping to do at the end. For the molding on this console, I decided to make my own simple profiles using the basic bits I had. The big box stores really just didn't have anything I liked for this project and they pretty much sell pine or MDF molding which I didn't want. All the molding was glued up and clamped in place with mitered corners. Now I was going to attach the molding to the top the same as the base molding but the miters were being finicky so I broke down and used my pin nailer to help keep everything in place. And just for good measure I clamped the miters to make sure that they stayed tight. Once the top was out of the clamps I used my track saw to trim the ends to length. I then gave everything a thorough sanding starting with 80 grit and stopping at 150 grit because I'm using Rubio Monocoat to finish the top and I can't sand beyond that grit. Another small detail I needed to tackle was edge banding the plywood shelves. This is iron on banding, so after applying a little heat to activate the glue, I used this little roller to make sure everything was tight. Next I trimmed the ends with a flush trimmer. You could also pair the ends with a chisel if you don't have one of these tools. After the glue is good and dry, I use this sweet edge band cutter to remove the waste on both sides with a single pass. And finally I use this edge breaker which is a great way to sand down the corners to prevent the edge banding from chipping down the road. I went ahead and put edge banding on both ends of this ply so that if one end got damaged from use over time I could flip the shelf around and have a fresh edge. Okay here's that process again. Iron on, roll out, trim the ends and the sides, and break the edges. Very simple, very fast. I'll leave a link in the description below for each of these tools in case you want them for your next edge banding project. The walnut top is going to be fastened to the console with screws. Near the front edge of the cabinet, I drilled four holes with a 1 8 inch drill bit. And near the back side of the cabinet, I used a 3 8 inch drill bit, which I wiggled back and forth to make an elongated hole. This will allow the top to expand and contract as needed. Okay, one other detail that I wanted to add to the top was to chamfer the underside. I really think this is going to look cool because it's going to continue the angular transition between the molding and the top of the cabinet. I just put a 45 degree chamfering bit in my router table and it did a great job on this task. After finding the depth that looked best to me, I continued on to the other three sides. Next I prepped for finish by masking off the inside of the cabinet. I'm going to be spraying this cabinet and don't want the overspray to get on the inside. Finally I tacked the back on the cabinet with my brad nailer and it's off to spray some finish. Now unfortunately I didn't film the finishing process because I really didn't want to harm my camera equipment. Once everything was finished I cut the hinge mortises in the doors. Now the depth and size of these depend on the exact hinges used so I like to save this step till the end as I'm installing the doors for a better fit. I then slide the top onto the cabinet making small adjustments until I'm happy with the placement. Each screw will get a washer before I fasten the top down. All that's left now is to reinstall the shelves and add the doors. Oh, I added magnetic catches by gluing a small block of plywood to the inside of the face frame and then added small rare earth magnets to the doors for extra hold. And I think this console turned out super clean. I'm so stoked to be adding this to our living room.